Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, just a real quick thing I wanted to go over with you. Um, you probably seen at the very beginning when I started my channel, I was um, gonna put a 2JZ in my Toyota truck. Um, I figured all the wiring out and uh, everything's pretty much squared away, but it's like the end of July and um, my wife says she wants to go wheeling and not let me tear the truck apart, which you know, I can't blame her. I really like to go wheeling too. So, um, so I haven't, I haven't lost interest in this whatsoever. I, I'm really dying to put it in, but since we do a lot of camping and four wheeling in the truck right now, through probably the next two months, I am going to do it. I, I have everything figured out. It's probably going to be maybe October, late September, October. I will uh, I will tear the truck apart and put this in. I got all the rest of the wiring figured out, and I'm extremely confident that it'll work just fine. So anyhow, I just wanted to give you an update that I haven't lost interest or you know put it on the back burner or anything like that. I just basically want to use the truck, and uh, I can't tear it apart and go have fun with it at the same time. I wish I could, but I can't. Uh, part two, I uh, have right over here, I have a new project that um, that fell in my lap, so I'm going to uh, help the uh, help the lady that owns it um, get it fixed up and make it a little happier than it is right now. Uh, so anyhow, we'll go over here and take a look at it, and I'll just kind of show you what, um, you know, show you what's going on with it. So it, uh, this is a Jeep Cherokee, and it uh, originally came with a uh, uh, 4.0 straight six in it, and somebody grafted in a, uh, I believe it's a 5.9 V8. And it's got a bunch of custom stuff done to it. It's got the custom bumper on the back. Uh, looks like some kind of a deal for a tire carrier. Um, they did the fenders I guess you could say they huh, did a decent job I mean they uh, went as far as to do the door jam and everything else here so it uh, yeah, I mean it's it's nice it's made out of tubing so it should be pretty strong looks like they have decent welds and everything on it um, fronts the same deal and uh, let's see here fronts got a the thing I don't quite understand about this is the stinger is like literally straight up and down. <laughs> so I'm not sure, uh, you know, usually you put a stinger out at an angle like towards the front so if you roll nose over it tips you to the side instead of over but whoever did it they built it like that. Um, not a huge deal, I just kind of different. Uh, it looks like they put a receiver on the front and they got all the wire in so they had a remote winch or a, a winch set up on a uh, receiver so they could put it in the front or the rear. There is wiring in the rear for the winch as well. Um, and they could definitely use some tires so what she wants to do is uh, there's a bunch of things I need to look at as far as safety items. Uh, it's really loose like there is a super bad ball joint or control arm ball joint and I guess there is no control arm bushings on this is solid axle um, so it probably needs ball joints or wheel bearings I'm not sure it is loose it's it's really scary just driving it over here uh, from the front of the house was like wow so anyhow I'm gonna check it out and uh, she wants to make this thing safe to drive as safe as a wheeler can be anyway and uh, you know and slowly modify it to make it a decent wheeler it runs really good. Whoever did the V8 swap did a really pretty decent job, considering I've seen a lot of hack jobs that were just like wire nuts and crap like that. So uh, anyhow, um, this is my new little project I'll be working on. And uh, anyhow, I'm gonna pull it inside and uh, we'll put it on jack stands. I'll pop the hood, show you underneath the hood and, uh, and go from there.
there's the engine bay. And uh, you know, that, that V8 fits in there really nice. And like, you know, as, as you heard when I pulled it in, I mean, it runs really good. And uh, whoever did the wiring, they did a half-assed decent job. I mean, it's not, uh, it could use a pruning as far as getting some of the stock 4.0 wiring plugs and stuff out of there. But I mean, overall, they did a pretty damn good job. I gotta say it's uh, so at least that part of it, the runnability part is really good. Thank God, because sometimes uh, little wiring gremlins and crap like that can be just a pain in the ass to try and figure out. So, so luckily, um, luckily all I gotta do is figure out the suspension. The brakes fade really badly, so I gotta get the brakes figured out and uh, figure out why the front end's so loose. And uh, yeah, once we get that done, then shoot, this thing would almost be road worthy. Uh, so anyhow, I'm just gonna jack her up and see what the hell's going on with it, and I'll be back to you here in a minute. All right. So I got the uh, I got the Jeep checked out. Um, as far as the front end goes, um, I pulled it in. It was super loose, and um, actually, what I found was pretty straightforward. Thank goodness. I thought this thing was pretty haggard, but um, uh, what had happened was the um, the tie rod end. Uh, they didn't tighten the nut all the way, um, so basically, it was just kind of just hanging out in there. And um, that was most of the looseness. I had to put a couple of washers on there to shim the castle nut so that I could put the cotter key in there. It, it just set down a little too low. The, the, it probably would have held, but I felt a little more comfortable shimming it up a little bit so that that way it was safe. Um, part two, the brake pads were completely worn out. Uh, so I did put brake pads on it and uh, got that all squared away on both sides. So far, so good. Everything else looks good. I did take the uh, differential cover off, and um, it was making a really funny noise with the hubs locked, and come to find out it's got a brand new uh, locker in it, so uh, that's why it was making the noise. Just wanted to make sure, so that way, uh, uh, didn't want to just blow it off and then have her take it up in the mountains and grenade it and uh, out in the middle of nowhere. So anyhow, um, the front end's done. Oh, man. So now I got the rear end jacked up, and uh, I got the rear end jacked up, and I'm gonna pull the wheels off and see what we got in there. I can already tell there's something leaking, probably gear oil. As you can see, the backing plate has got oil all over it. Actually, both sides do. That side's not quite as bad as this. It smells like gear oil, but um, we're gonna take it apart and uh, see what we got going on. Okay, well I got the right rear wheel off. Um, looks like that's got a nice Yukon axle in it. Uh, but I wanted to show you the wheel spacers that are on here. Uh, in case you don't understand or know about wheel spacers, uh, basically what it does is it uh, is it shims it out. It, you know, gets the tire further out away from where it would be in your stock location. Uh, so basically how it works is that these would be your oh, original equipment lug nuts. And then these are the ones that come with the kit. So basically by putting your tire out further, it gives you a wider, wider pattern to, you know, to you know, prevent you from rolling over side hilling or whatnot, or you could put fatter tires on it so that they'll fit in there. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than trying to widen the rear end. Um, but anyhow, I wanted to show you that and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and we'll get the drum off and see what we got going on. I can already tell already that they're uh, way out of adjustment. so. Hopefully that's a lot of the, uh, the crappy brake pedal feel. Uh, it does have, it's full of fluid and of course the pads are new on the front. So, anyhow, we'll tear it apart and see what we got. There's your wheel spacer. Uh, nice looking axle. And uh, holy mackerel! Woo! Oh boy. What a mess. So the shoes are gone. <laughs> and uh, it looks like the axle seal's leaking. Hmm. That sucks. So the brake shoes are completely wiped out. 
probably because of the gear oil. So the next thing I'm going to have to do is I'll take the other side apart and uh, see what it looks like. And then I'll have to rip all the stuff apart, take the brakes off, pull the diff cover off so I can pull the axle out, I, I assume anyway. I'll look into it a little further, but uh, anyhow, on, on to the, the other, other side. side. Here we go. Deals the other side. Parts already. Oh, oh man. Oh shit. Fuck. Ah oh, boy. Yeah. This is what I feared. So that is fresh gear oil. So this axle seal is definitely leaking. And looks like this stuff all fell apart inside there and mangled a whole bunch of stuff awesome so just like the other side I'll have to uh, tear this thing down and uh, get her fixed up cool <laughs> all right well fantastic so I guess the next step is I got to see how the axles are held into place and uh, we'll go from there. All right, well, unfortunately, I'm running out of time today to, uh, to continue on with the Jeep. But anyhow, um, tomorrow I will get back at it again, and uh, we'll get this thing tore apart, and I'll show you what's going on with the axle seals and the brakes and all that. Um, anyhow, I appreciate you watching my video, and uh, if you could hit the like and subscribe button and hit the little bell for the post notifications. Uh, don't want you to miss anything. Uh, we're just going to get better and better and do better quality videos and all that. But um, once again, thank you so much for watching, and uh, have a great day. Peace.